say after the COVID-19, uh, there are like a couple of industries, but uh, the first thing that uh, comes in mind is the events industry. And uh, how do you see the future uh, in terms of, will there be any faces uh, like the response, recovery, and uh, there are different sizes uh, within this sector, like there are startups, uh, there are enterprise level, uh, like Tarsus Group. And uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a hard question, but uh, what do you recommend to them uh, to like respond in these uh, difficult times? Yeah, the thing is, uh, you're right, the, uh, our industry has been one of the worst affected industries, along with travel. Because uh, uh, what happened is it, it was for a while, uh, legally illegal to host the exhibition, yeah? Uh, countries banned meetings above certain level. So we had shows sold out for thousands and thousands of people to come in, all of them postponed. So uh, we were really badly hit. All of our uh, competitors and peers in the industry are going through really, really tough times. But uh, now that the, the, the tale of recovery is uh, not homogeneous around the world, yeah? Uh, everything to the east is already starting to recover. We have shows in China opening actually tomorrow. Uh, there have been oh. really, really big shows in uh, Shenzhen two weeks ago, and their visitor numbers are up, not even down, yeah? But China, yeah. Is, China is past COVID. China is in the new normal, yeah? You wear a face mask, you get a temperature check, uh, you distance a bit, but you carry on as normal. So it's back. Yeah. So that's the story. Uh, in Turkey, where I am right now, uh, and uh, we are going to be hopefully opening our exhibitions in uh, September, the first week of September. And it looks, and on the track, and I've just looked at some numbers, the, the visitor registrations are okay, actually. So in, in some countries who have had the power to restrict uh, the uh, movements and uh, let's say, freedoms of their uh, uh, populations for a, a concentrated amount of time, they won, yeah? Look at New Zealand. They don't have COVID anymore, yeah? But some countries, more to the West now, that have not restricted movement, that have not taken big measures or, or not policed those measures, uh, the situation is not that good. Uh, like the UK, like the US, uh, and now Latin America as well. So uh, those places are entering the peak period still. Not the UK, UK the peak story, but let's say the US and uh, all of the Americas, uh, bar uh, Canada, are entering their, uh, let's say, uh, ugly phase slowly. Uh, and uh, so uh, our uh, projections, because we have to do some data, uh, our predictions in the US and uh, Mexico are not stellar. Let's put it that way. So we might need to postpone a bit more, but uh, we are hopeful about China. We're hopeful about Turkey. We're hopeful about uh, the other places in Southeast uh, Asia uh, that have done a good job in controlling this uh, outbreak uh, to come back. Now, if you look at uh, this from a perspective of company size, mm -hmm. it's really hard for the small companies. It is really hard because uh, they will have cash flow problems, yeah? Because what happens to your shows, you, you postpone it. You don't want to cancel your show. Nobody wants to cancel your show. People want to come to your show. People want to do business, yeah? Uh, so you postpone your show, but when you do that, if you're a big company, if, you're, if you can uh, leverage debt, uh, if you have access to capital markets like we do, uh, you can do this. But if you don't, but if you're small, and you need that money to pay your rent, if you're a two or three people, uh, person company, you're in very deep trouble uh, because your income is literally zero. Yeah. Uh, so for those companies, it's a very, very tough, uh, tough game out there. And uh, we believe that the, the number of exhibitions uh, will take a very big hit in 2020 because uh, some will go out of business, unfortunately. Uh, I'll I get a follow-up question about it because uh, the thing is now, uh, I, I feel like this uh, strategy of these B2 event sectors, uh, they are looking at the numbers and uh, for example, yeah, China is already uh, seems over it, 
then as you said, we didn't need normal, there can deliver some new exhibitions or conferences. Uh, but also, is there any other form that uh, will the B2B events, uh, how to deliver the uh, B2B event will change? Is, is it possible to have like pure digital experience or for events, is it hard to make it digital? Yeah, the thing is we're working on uh, making sure that all of our shows have uh, an enhanced uh, digital uh, attendance capacity, uh, but we don't want to decouple it from our shows. We don't want to go fully virtual, but we want to go hybrid absolutely, and we're working on it. Uh, because uh, we see that internet, well, COVID is over in China, but international travel still hasn't started. So therefore, our, most of our shows, most of our big businesses, our international shows, they, they need international exhibitors and visitors, yeah? So we see that that part of the equation will not be back for a while, yeah? Uh, so we are setting up uh, uh, enhanced digital, uh, let's say, offerings for people to have the opportunity to participate in some capacity to our shows uh, from where they are, if they cannot travel. Domestically, we would like them to come, absolutely. Uh, but if international, we are allowing for discrete participation through advanced matchmaking, through video calling, through advanced product categories and this and that. So we've come up with something we call digital live and we are making sure that all of our top shows have this capacity.